In this video, I'll demonstrate the calculation of the percentage exceeding the median statistic, or PIM, uh, which is used for single case uh, research designs. And if you want the actual raw data that I'm using here, I show those uh, uh, data sets in the previous video on the PND, or percentage of non-overlap data. So please refer to that other video uh, for the actual data. One of the problems in using the PND, or percentage of non-overlap data, is that the presence of a single outlier data point in your baseline phase uh, can uh, make the uh, PND statistic turn out to be zero, or close to zero. And you can see that demonstrated here, where this particular baseline has one uh, data point that's very high. It's a data value of 16. And that data value is as high as the highest point in the tr treatment phase. So when you compute the PND uh, and you uh, place your uh, line across where the highest baseline data point is, uh, you can see that none of the uh, treatment phase data points are higher than that. So if your goal is to increase the scores at the treatment phase, uh, then Obviously, with this data set, we've done that, but the PND is going to come out to be zero. So, in that sense, the PND is particularly prone to this specific weakness that a single uh, outlier data point can ruin the uh, analysis. In 2006, the uh, percentage exceeding the median statistic was suggested uh, by Seng Sing Ma, uh, and you've got the citation uh, underneath there uh, in the journal Behavior Modification, if you want to look it up. Um, in their review article, Magan, O'Keefe, and Johnson in 2011 found that only about 5% of single case design studies uh, where those authors had conducted review articles, only about 5% of them uh, used the PEM for their meta-analyses. And so, uh, you know, perhaps it's because the statistic itself is fairly new. Um, uh, the PND is highly popular, and so there's a little bit of a barrier to overcome. Uh, but in many situations, I think the PEM is a better statistic to use. So I'm going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons. The PEM, percentage exceeding the median, uh, uses the median of the baseline scores for determining the position of the comparison line. Uh, for the example uh, of this data set with an outlier, uh, the median would be 8. And so when we place our horizontal line for comparison purposes across the baseline phase, you can see that 100% uh, of the treatment phase data points are higher than that line. So. <laughs> I mean, we've got this data set where a single outlier data point, if you use the PND, it comes out to be 0%, uh, which is an indication of no effectiveness of the treatment. Whereas if you use the PEM, it comes out to be 100%. So there's a huge difference. Now let's use some uh, data sets that don't have uh, outliers in them. Here's a data set from the uh, paper by Lens, and again, uh, these data sets, the, the next three data sets, are ones where I have the full data uh, provided in my previous video on the PND. Uh, for these data, just using the baseline, the median is 23. We insert our comparison line at the value 23 on the y-axis, and then we count the number of treatment phase scores that are on the favorable side. And in this particular instance, lower scores are favorable. I mean, it depends on uh, what is the goal for your treatment. Uh, if, if you're trying to reduce a disorderly behavior uh, or something of that nature, then lower scores are better. Uh, and for this particular hypothetical, we want to see lower scores. So you count the number of data points in the treatment phase that are below that line or in other words, on the favorable side of that line. And then uh, to get the PEM statistic, you simply divide 
the number of favorable treatment data points by the total number of treatment data points. There are 15 treatment data points, and 13 of them, uh, 13 of them are on the uh, uh, favorable side. So 13 divided by 15 gives us our proportion or percentage. And so for the lens data, the uh, PEM comes out to be 86.7%, which would be considered pretty good. Here's an example where uh, I created some data where I thought the uh, outcome would be a small difference between treatment and uh, baseline phase. If our objective in this particular hypothetical is increasing scores, uh, we can see that, well, there's some variability in the treatment phase, uh, but in general, the scores tend to be a little bit higher uh, than in the baseline, but the, the difference is not that pronounced. So uh, we go forward with calculation of the uh, PEM. We find the median for the baseline, which is 14. Insert your comparison line uh, at the value of 14 on the y-axis. Count the number of treatment measurement points that are on the favorable side. And in this case, favorable is higher. So we count those uh, data points. We do not count ties. So this data point right here uh, which is a tie, it's exactly 14 in the treatment phase, that one would not be counted. We have 13 treatment phase uh, measures, uh, 10 are on the favorable side, uh, 3 are below that line or tied with that line. So the PEM would be 10 divided by 13, and we get the value of 76.9%. It's fairly decent, it's not a huge difference but it's in the right direction. And then here's another uh, data set. Again, this is one that I created myself and I wanted to have some, uh, some numbers to work with where it seems that there is a pronounced difference between the baseline phase and the treatment phase. We go forward with the calculation of the PEM. The median of the baseline is 12. We insert the horizontal line at the median on the y-axis of value 12. And you can see that there is one data point in the treatment phase that is a tie uh, for that uh, baseline median of, 14, of 12 in this case. But all the rest are on the positive side, on the favorable side. So we count the number of uh, treatment phase measurement points that are uh, favorable, and we divide by the total number of treatment phase data points. So there are 13 treatment phase measures, 12 are on the favorable side. So the PEM in this instance is 92.3. And you can see that the, the value for the PEM seems to fairly closely adhere to the visual analysis uh, where the, uh, the previous data set, which was kind of a small difference, was quite a bit lower than in this instance where uh, quite clearly, we see a, a, a big change in the treatment phase, and uh, the PEM is reflecting that, so that's good. Now, to interpret the results, what we do is we use the benchmarks put forward by Scruggs, Astro Pieri, and Casto, 1987. Uh, and, um, you know, these are sort of arbitrary benchmarks, but they seem to be logical in, in nature, so we'll, we'll go with that. Anything below 50 would be no effect or negative effect. 50 to 70% would be questionable effect, 70 to 90% moderately effective, and 90% or above highly effective, at least according to Scruggs and colleagues. Now they put forward these benchmarks for the PND, and for my previous video, I calculated the PND for these three data sets to be uh, as shown here. The lens data, where there was an obvious uh, change in treatment, only had a PND value of 53.3. Uh, so that PND for the lens data is not reflecting the obvious difference. If you go back to that, uh, well, actually, let me go back and show you right here. Here's the lens data, and you can see that the, uh, th there's a pronounced trend uh, in the data 
but the PND doesn't show it. And that's why the PEM is a little bit better in my view. So let me fast forward back over here to the results. Uh, so for the small difference data set that I created, we had a PND of 61.5. Uh, Tarlow, and this part two is from the previous uh, video. Uh, Tarlow, uh, Kevin Tarlow's uh, p-value calculator for the PND shows that all three of these PNDs are highly significant. Uh, and, and that's another reason uh, why I'm not really trusting the PND as a good measure uh, for single case uh, research designs. The PEM over here, we can see that there uh, seems to be a gradation in terms of improvement of the PEM as we shift from the small difference data set to the lens data, which is a medium difference data set to the large difference data set, which was the last one that I did. And so in conclusion, uh, we can see that the PEM seems to uh, bear a more uh, logical resemblance to the changes that we see in the visual analysis of these data sets. Well, thanks for watching.